Hey guys, today we're talking about the super important subject of healing fatherlessness. I've got some ideas that I know are gonna help you. Let's get to it. Welcome to the channel. If we haven't met yet, my name is Andrew. For nearly 30 years, I've had the privilege of helping people from all walks of life, training them, mentoring them, and that's what this channel is all about, helping men to become the best that they can become. Let's go to today's episode now. Guys, thanks for taking the time to join us on the channel. And in this series, we've been talking about mental health for middle-aged men, such an important topic. And I'm really, really trying to bring some help and some support to men everywhere who might be struggling with their mental health, or perhaps we can prepare you for a time in the future where you might have a battle in this regard. I want you to be well prepared so that you get through it and you come out the other side stronger. In today's episode, we're talking about a subject that is so, so close to my heart and I'm passionate about helping men to manage this issue and to find solutions in this arena. We're talking about the crucial subject of healing fatherlessness. Now, even when I introduce that idea of fatherlessness, that can evoke so many emotional responses for so many people. The fact of the matter is where we're at in our communities and in the world today, there are more people than ever that have got a struggle in their heart and in their mind and in their identity because of fatherlessness. Without a shadow of a doubt, it is the single greatest epidemic that the world is suffering from right now. It doesn't matter whether you look at things quantitatively, qualitatively, if you research it through case studies, empirical studies, all kinds of research is pointing to the fact that nobody is better off as a result of fatherlessness. For many of us, we've had a difficult journey when it comes to our relationship with our fathers. For many of you watching right now, even listening to me talk about this subject is somewhat difficult because it brings reminder, and for some of you, even a sense of relapse about times in your life that were not easy. And for some of you, times in your life that were genuinely painful. Just because that's the case does not mean that we shouldn't talk about it. We need to talk about it because it's impacting all of us in society and it's having a huge impact on the mental health of so many of our men. When we talk about fatherlessness, we're talking about the whole spectrum. People whose fathers who were not there, fathers who were there but emotionally not there, fathers who were there but maybe were violent or destructive, or abusive or something else, the truth is many people, way too many people, probably some of you guys watching right now have had a bad experience when it comes to the relationship with fathers. But if you've been watching the channel for any amount of time, you'll probably remember that I've been passionate about this subject that we can't just stand idly back and commentate about the past. We need to do something about our present, which is about healing, and we need to do something about our future, which is about the other younger men who are gonna come after us. You see, I've been privileged to be able to receive two very powerful truths that have helped me to go on a journey of healing, have helped me to be set free from the heavyweight burden of trying to navigate the complexities of that relationship and what could have been and what should have been. The first simple truth I've talked about before and I've shared it on the channel here, maybe you're new, maybe you've never heard this, or maybe this is a reminder for you today. A wise man once said to me, a man who was a mentor of mine, a man who guided me through many conversations about many subjects, he once said to me in regards to this issue of having a reality or a perception of fatherlessness, he said to me, Andrew, hoping that your father will be everything that you expect him to be is like asking a man with broken legs to go for a run with you. And he went on to say these words, which hit me between the eyes, which is to say right in the heart. He said to me, Andrew, it doesn't even matter if he wants to do it, he can't. That hit me so powerfully because I realized that maybe in my own family history, maybe in my own ancestry, there were some injuries and some 
uh, inabilities that had held back the men in my family line that I was still a recipient of in my early life as well. And I started to realize that maybe for some of those men, for some of our fathers, even when they wanted to be great fathers, they didn't have a full capacity to be who you and I hoped they could be. If we could learn to accept that men with broken legs can't run, we might be able to change some of our expectation and start a journey of healing that will set us on a new pathway. I'm not for a moment suggesting that these fathers in our lives shouldn't run with us. Of course they should. But maybe the light that we need to see is more explanation about why they didn't and maybe why they couldn't. The second truth that has been so powerful for me, and I hope it can be powerful for you, especially in regards to how fatherlessness affects our mental health. I learned many, many years ago that in every single family line, including mine, somebody has to make the choice to be the circuit breaker in the family tree. Now, when it comes to me being a father, I have two children of my own. And in my life as a father, as a parent, many, many years ago, on several fronts, I made the choice that I would become a circuit breaker in my family tree. I decided that there were certain things that I didn't want to pass on to my children that had been passed on to me. And the thing about it is I wasn't doing it because I was trying to throw shade, as they say, at my own parents' generation. Not at all. I was simply making the choice as a man that even though I might not have received what I hoped for and should have received, I made the choice to be a circuit breaker so that my children could receive something different for their future and together we could kickstart a brand new way of doing family and doing relationships and doing emotions and conversation in the rest of our family line. I know that that's a very short conversation about the subject of fatherlessness and of course this subject is so broad and many of you would do well to actually have extensive conversations with wise counsellors and trusted guides that can help you walk into greater healing and greater recovery in those areas where you've been impacted. But if you could maybe just take a moment or two to contemplate those simple truths that I've shared today, hopefully it can be a catalyst in your life to get you moving in the right direction to experience healing and recovery from the impact of fatherlessness in your life. And I'm certain that if you can do that, your mental health, your entire identity, well-being, and purpose in your days will be boosted and impacted positively. I hope you've been enjoying this series on mental health for middle-aged men. This is pretty much our last episode in the series. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'd love for you to do that. I'd love you to leave a comment or ask a question. Let me know where you're at on your journey as a man, as a middle-aged man, or as a young or older man. Talk to me about mental health challenges and questions. My goal is to keep on bringing you as much value as I possibly can to be that supportive role, to encourage you to be the best man that you can be. That's what the channel is all about and I can't wait to speak with you some more in our next episode. See you then.